here we go. Looks like you're ready. Click here to start streaming. I'm going live. It says I'm live. Wondrous. I'll be looking in the chat and seeing if anyone shows up. And I'm going to load up some things here so we can make some cyanotypes. And we're actually going to do development first. I'm going to put down this empty bucket. And we're going to develop two of the cyanotypes that we made yesterday, but we didn't have time to finish and see all the way to the end. So that was a cyanotype that we made using some blocks. When I went to elementary school, we called them pattern, pattern blocks. I'm going to add some water. This is just plain old regular water. And that is going to start the development of our cyanotype. So now it's going to do all sorts of chemical reactions in and around the paper. The parts that didn't receive sunlight when we were making this cyanotype yesterday, the parts directly under the blocks show up as pretty much white. That's an indication that they didn't get much of the sun. The places that the sun did hit have turned dark blue or light blue, depending on the severity of sun exposure they got. So we're looking at a record of about two or three hours worth of time compressed into a single image we can look at. And that's true of literally every photograph you've seen. None of them represents a single moment or a single unit of time. They're always a, a couple of moments stretched and then compressed into the image. It's a duration of time captured from the beginning of the moment until the end. That is this photo. That is any photo. That's still developing and it's doing a really nice job. Let's take a look at our other one. Same idea. And we can just leave it right there. In fact, let's leave it there and see what happens. like the paper is doing yoga. Let us all do the unfurling cyanotype move. I'm going to help this develop by spraying it with a little bit of water. This actually has a few instances of water already having been dropped on it, which developed parts of the image before before this moment. So we'll see, do these, do these pre-exposed images areas turn white or do they still have some color in them? We will see soon. And again, this is water straight out of the, the sink. There's no, there's no anything in this water besides whatever drinking water is in your town which if you're lucky, you can read a water report for the drinking water in your town. So if you're curious, Google your town's name and water report and find out what's in your water. This has a lot more diversity of tone compared to the other image. And I know why. Why is the answer is the question you're asking now. The, uh, the answer that, that is for why, why does this have more tone? And I'll just fold it over on itself. We'll look at these side by side. These, are, these were both made, these images were both made using the same sunlight and they were both made with the same blocks. And yet one of them has a different look from the other. 
And I can't define what that different look is aside from uh, contrast and tone. For me, you know what? I'm probably not even using the word tone appropriately. I think I just want to stick with the word contrast because contrast is, is something I can define. Contrast is the difference in brightness between the lightest part of your image and the darkest part of your image. So in this case, the contrast is from dark blue to bright white and everything in between provides different variations on that contrast. This has more contrast because there are different tones throughout compared to this, which is more one white, one dark blue, one middle gray, one middle blue. This has a lot of different variations. I moved some of these blocks in between the process of making this cyanotype. So after an hour, I moved the triangle and let it expose somewhere else. That's part of the fun of cyanotyping. It's not a photograph that needs a lens necessarily. So you can keep arranging the subjects on your paper as long as you want. You know, imagine, imagine taking a group photo with 20 different people and asking them to stay still for an hour, but they're all standing. I think they'd have a hard time doing that. Maybe if you asked them all to take a nap for an hour on a piece of paper, that would actually probably be a nice cyanotype. We're gonna develop a few more that we did yesterday, and then we're gonna make some cyanotypes. So let's see, we got that one. I'm just gonna leave them, see what they do on their own. Oh, that one got a little developer already going. We'll see what happens. I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit. We can see some details on there. All right, let's spray that one. Such beautiful differences in color. And I just, you can see I'm actually spraying some of the, the developed blue right off of this image. <laughs> there it goes. Because it was just sitting on top. It was there was no more paper for it to absorb into, apparently. Which means we coated this particular cyanotype very thoroughly. Which is good. It's good to be thorough if we're gonna engage in a task for no reason other than joy. And we're just continuing to add cyanotypes to our developer water because it's not, it's not bad to share developing water with cyanotypes. They can all just have the same bath and be very happy in that fact. Happy cyanotypes, that's like happy trees. Okay, I'm going to leave those for just a moment longer. All right, these are doing well. I'm gonna let them keep developing. Actually, I'm gonna dump this little bit of water out. We're right near a sink, right over there. Here, I'll make it bigger so you can see our environment a little better. Right over there is a sink, and I'm gonna dump this water into that sink and then fill it up with a little extra. Try not to put the water directly on the cyanotype because you can kind of, when you're, you're putting an abrasive substance water on, on something that is inherently kind of brittle, 
So it can just eat through it if you pour cyan or if you pour tap water directly on your cyanotypes from the tap for a long period of time. It can just kind of eat through them. I'm gonna put this down. I'll just leave it here. You can you can see the magic happen right there. And now I'm gonna move on to making our next cyanotype, which is a type of cyanotype called the contact print. And I don't know why I got so close there. Let's zoom back out. Yeah, okay. This is a contact printing frame. And we use this to make little little sandwiches of cyanotype. So what we do is if we wanted a, a reversed image, we wanted a dark blue image against a white sky, we would take this and we would press it onto a piece of cyanotype paper that had not yet been exposed like that. So now we have this cyanotype here and then we would put it in the sunlight. The sun would pass through the image, pass through the, the cyanotyped image onto the unexposed paper and expose that paper over an hour, however long it takes. And then you would take it out and you would open it up and develop it and you would have a reversed version of what you had. So this would be a, a blue shape looking that way against a white background with some blue specks on it. That's a contact print. And that's what we're gonna use this for. We made some prints the other day that were half, but had not yet had this exposed, this side done anything with yet. So now we've exposed this image, I've developed it, dried it, and then I've sensitized this side of the paper. So what we're gonna do is fold that image over on itself, just like that. And so now we've got that same situation where image right here, boom, paper, we're gonna put it in this frame. And let's do that to the other ones, because we made all these, we made all these the other day together. Lego guy. Yeah, all right. So now it's important that we're going to put these in these cyanotype printing frames. How many can we fit? One, two, three, four, five. I'm making sure to lay them all so they're all going to be the right way. But we have a few more cyanotypes that we've made recently. Like we made all of these together in the last uh, cyano adventure. Well, let's, let's do versatile, the giraffe. And let's do, let's see which of these has a stronger, I want to see, I want to see what this one looks like, because I'm curious how that's going to transmit onto the cyanotype. Let's get two pieces of unexposed cyanotype. So we'll go, you know, here's our, here we go. Let's do the example again that I just showed. We'll take our cyanotype of the giraffe and we'll just go like that. And then that goes on there. And then do we have room for another one? I think we do. So the same thing, there we are. Let's move all these for just a moment. Cause we're gonna flip this frame around open the back. It's a, it's a hinged back, so we can open one side of it or the other side. And that's a very useful thing later on. If we want to check how our exposure is doing, we can just flip open half of it and expose, you know, look at how half of it's going. There we go. Putting these down. So it's going to be blue side looking up to us so that it will be looking onto the cyanotype. Uh, unexposed cyanotype. Just put them all like that. Looks like we're going to fit three and then two. There we go. There we 
go. That looks like a picnic basket. And then we've got giraffe. Yeah, these will fit. Oh, you know, we're gonna, are we gonna have room for one more? No, let's be, let's not be too greedy. We have more sun to use later. These don't have to be exact. In fact, they're kind of better if they aren't. So let's stop. Let's do this. Sound effects optional. All right. Oh, lovely. And all we do now is put it in the sunlight. And if we angle it a little directly into the sunlight, we get an even better exposure. Because the more what we want, here's an example. Here's our contact printing frame with the images in it. And the sunlight is coming in from an angle like, you know, let's say, doesn't matter. We want the sunlight to perfectly strike our um, contact printing frame, just perpendicular, just So we're gonna angle the contact printing frame to hit the sun exactly appropriately to do that. That's gonna achieve a faster exposure in less time. And I suppose one of those statements is redundant. Lovely. Now we have some cyanotypes exposing in the, in the sun, in the contact printing frame. That's happening right down there. Let's see if we can focus on it or at least expose for it. No, we cannot. That's okay. We know it's happening down there. Let's take these cyanotypes that have been washed and are ready now, and let's dry them on a piece of screen. My uncle is in the screen door installation business, and he has set me up with all these lovely screens that are for my windows, but I do like to use to dry cyanotypes on. So that's pretty nice to have the option. Okay. So these were cyanotypes we made yesterday. We made these using pattern blocks, those multicolored blocks that you can arrange in different ways to create patterns, which makes their name make a lot of sense. And we're putting them on a screen because we want them to get some drying time. We want the air to get all the way around on every side of them so that the paper will dry out. Hopefully it will dry out uniformly. We don't want it drying out in one part before the other because then it will start to kind of curl or warp or any number of other words. Those are, those are lovely and I cannot wait to see what they look like reversed. That's, that's one of the, the best parts of cyanotype is after you've made these magic images, you get to see what they look like reversed if you make a contact print. And that's when the images can really come to life because what was abstract suddenly becomes reversed and realized. So it looks like they used to in real life, just a shape instead of an inverted shape. We'll put these out to dry as well. Yeah, okay. And I think now it's time to make some cyanotypes. We have some paper that we prepared yesterday that we're going to use. And I'm gonna bring that out. And what we're gonna do real quick is dry this because cyanotypes do not like water. Well, they, they like water. They don't like water before they've been exposed. How do they know when they've been exposed? That's a good question. I'm again personifying. I don't want to get this cyanotype paper wet before it's ready to be developed. And that is the most accurate statement I could make. A 
it looks like we're going to have room for two cyanotypes or one. Let's do one to start with. And this one cyanotype is going to be a neat one. I say neat because I like the word, but also because it's a lot of smooth, good lines and angles. This is a, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. It's not, there we go. Now we can see it. This was a Kodak camera from 1968-ish. It does not, it works, but it is not a format that is still sold. It's Instamatic, which is a, a beautiful format. It's an easy load cartridge, but just not a format that's used anymore. So let's take this camera that cannot be used and use it. What will happen when we take this into the sun? Well, right now I can tell you the sun is coming in at this, this angle roughly. And I know that that's gonna be a lot of wasted shadow that we're not gonna capture. So let's turn this around already. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Now we're looking like something. Now the sun's gonna come in and kind of rake its shadow all the way across the paper. Let's move it into the sun. Oh, you know what, I can't do that. <laughs> let, me, let me put this so you can all see the fun. All right. I'm gonna move these guys. Find a home for them in a moment. All right, and I'm gonna move this mobile rolling desk cart outside. Ooh, it's like no. There's a little lip here. I don't want to expose it to just yet. There we go. And there we go. All right. Now we're going to do this. I'm going to modulate my voice a little better because now I am outside and I do not wish to wake my neighbors up on a Saturday with my voice unless they are already awake. Down here are steps. In fact, that's where I'm gonna put the cyanotype in the contact printing frame. I don't intend to use those steps today, which is a great way to ensure that I will. And again, trying to keep it perpendicular. In fact, I'll move it down one. There we go. like an accident would have happened, so we'll adjust it again. There we go. That feels good. So what's happened with our cyanotype here? Let's see if we can see the shadow. Let me block that out a little more fully. Yeah, I can see the shadow. All right. Now let's do this. Let's take a look at our cyanotype, our cyanotype thus far. Okay. This was a two-sided cyanotype. Oh, well, that was smart of me. Well, let's expose the other side now. So what I'm doing is I'm, well, it's not ready to expose the other side yet. Let us, let us do, Let's put the Instax cartridge in there. This was the film that would have gone in this camera, or that does go in this camera. But we're not using the film. 
So if the camera was like that, the film would be right there. Just like that. And let's take the flash off and put it like that. And I think that's a good start. We're making a kind of an exploded camera and that's not a bad thing. It's not nearly as violent as it sounds. It'd be more like a camera diagram. Thank you, Marco. It's great to be here this morning with you. This was the first opportunity I had to make uh, to check in the chat, and I'm glad to see your message. So let's see here. We've got we got our cyanotype objects on the table. We've moved them. Let's move them again into the shade. There we go. What have we done? Okay, that's pretty cool. And, and the answer to what have we done is still not yet clear. <laughs> Let's turn it around again. And I guess we're going to flip it this way. And this way. Yeah, there we go. That seems right. Just kind of trying to line up this and this with this and this. There we go. And then the same for this again. If it's reversed, it would be there. All right, now we put it back into the sun. And try to line it up a little more accurately. There we go. Yeah. Now we'll get some good definition on that. And it looks like some of this is just going completely gunmetal gray, and some of it is going kind of dark blue, light blue. We'll see the difference in the final cyanotype. Okay, let's see. So now we got this, and we're just going to put the camera on here one more time. I'm actually going to do this. There we are. And now I'm actually going to point it. We need one more thing to do this properly. Just one moment. What we need is to secure the paper a rigid surface that we can adjust the angle of. So this is what we're going to do. Magnets make it possible. There we are. Okay. Put that right there. Seems happy. And so now I put it back in the sun. But I'm also going to point it right at the sun. This. so that it takes almost no shadow anymore and we'll leave it right there and what we're doing is creating a little bit more darkness on the other parts of the exposure so that, that chimney part where the flash cube goes, we're going to make that part a little darker. But the part where the camera's covering up will stay light. This should give our 
final image some extra dimension. And thank you, Martha. You say the nicest things, and it always makes me happy to see and hear. It's always nice to be appreciated for what I am, and likewise to everyone that's watching. All right. Boom. So now we have a camera, a flash, and an Instamatic cartridge. But this was a two-sided exposure, meaning we're only halfway done. There's this whole backside now. What do we do with it? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the camera, figure out where it was on the front, right there, and then duplicate it on the back, like that. And I can kind of see this is where the corner of the camera was. So I would put it right there and shift it down a little bit and then do this and then do that. Like maybe like that. Actually, I don't know. Let me look. There's no right way to do this, but let's do it a fun way. All right, let's move it into the sun again. It'll shift and we'll move it again. Actually, it looks perfect. Man, that's easy. And kudos to the iPhone. It is three cameras in one. Taking a look at how the other cyanotypes are doing and drying. Doing and drying. This is another one of those cyanotypes that will be sensitized over here once it's dry. We can take these inside now. So when do we flip this over? I don't know. Maybe we don't. Not every cyanotype has to be manipulated. I guess inherently a cyanotype is a manipulation. It wouldn't have happened on its own. Or at the very least, it's unlikely to have happened on its own. There might be instances of naturally forming cyanotype deposits in this world, but I'm not sure where they would be. Let's see, how's this looking? It's looking good. It's time to turn it. Not everything has perfect symmetry of front and back, so not everything can be realigned perfectly for a double-sided cyanotype. That's okay. It's hard to know which orientation. There we go. <laughs> this camera has a cool feature on it. Its lens has a secret button to extend it. That's all. I just thought it was a neat feature. It doesn't, it doesn't help the cyanotype improve. Hmm. 
This has been a lovely Saturday so far. I guess it could be Sunday where you are watching if you are possibly in, I don't know where you would be, Australia? New Zealand. It could be a beautiful Sunday for you in New Zealand. And in which case, I am glad. But here in San Diego, it is Saturday, based on the conventions of our 24-hour planet. All right. The question remains now, do we add the instamatic cartridge to the back cyanotype image? And my answer is no, we do not. That would only add convolutedness to this. I like to make it, if there's a complicated image on the front of a cyanotype, in this case, the first part we made, I like to leave the image on the back relatively uncomplicated. That way it can support the image on the front when you hold it up to the light. You know, we're just kind of giving this back of this paper an outline shape of the camera and the flash. So that way the details will be more strong, strongly communicated when we see the final image. And let's do that thing we did last time where we, uh, we actually pick the camera up. Be a little harder since the camera's not actually secured to anything this time. There we go. That's fine. These are the these are the ways the cyanotype are made. And does it matter that we're not exposing all of this cyanotype paper right now? Meaning the part in the shade right now? No, it doesn't matter. That part's gotten enough exposure. We're just trying to create a better outline around the camera's body uh, without its overlapping shadow. Now we've put a lot of work into this. I think it's time to see how it turned out. Let's have some enjoyment of this process and the immediacy it brings. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I think this is gonna be a really cool cyanotype. Not just cause I like cameras, but I do. And not just because we made it together, but we did. The reason I think it's going to be a really cool cyanotype is because I made one of these yesterday that was almost really cool. And it's almost really cool because it's kind of dim. It didn't quite fully develop. There wasn't much light left toward the end of the day. I see definitely obvious things to begin with. And as more of the developer happens, we will see more of the image start to come into focus. Maybe focus isn't the right word. We just so happened to pick an ideal time to be making this cyanotype. And I mean that in a in a relationship to the sun's angle uh, on where we are on the earth. What time of day is it right now is called, well, it's not really a time of day that has a name, but for those who make cyanotypes, we are at the time of day where the shadow ratio is one to one. Meaning if I had this object and it was this many inches tall, three, four inches, it would cast a shadow that was three or four inches tall. You know, it's not distorting its, its height or its length or anything. It's just one to one. And we're gonna do something fun with that in just a moment.
Let's see what the back of this looks like. We spent more time on this front part, but let's see what the back looks like. Oh, very camera, camera yuller, camera -ler. camular, camular. It's very camular. Thank you for that process of mortifying. And when we combine both of these images and look at the sunlight, you know, hold it up to the sun, they'll combine into a nice defined camera. In fact, to me, I see a sailboat. I don't know, what do you see? I will always look at this and see a live stream. <laughs> That's actually one of the best things about cyanotypes. If you make them, you remember the process of making them often. And in that process, you've put so much of your time into the making of these, they become more imbued with value. They, they become representations, physical representations of time you have spent and thoughts you have had. And when you look at them years later, you might be able to return to those great moments. All right, let's give this tiniest bit less water. Dumping some of it out and filling some of it back up. And let's take a moment and go check on our contact printing frame because that's got some interesting stuff in it and we can see how they're doing. Let's swap you kids out. Okay, so we're gonna check these two. These are all pretty comparable image exposure wise. So if these two look good, we can be assured that these all look pretty good. Oh, you know what? Yeah, well, whatever. Let's see. I'm gonna open this up carefully. It's actually gonna disrupt some of this, but that's okay. Press right there so I can lift. How are they doing? There. I'm so tempted to say they're done. And that means they are. You know what? They're not done. I usually don't vacillate between two options like that. But in this case, I want us to have good results. And a little extra time in the sun will give us those results. So let's... Let's put the effort in where it's worth. All right, our next cyanotype, because it's time to move on and make the next one, is gonna be right over here. two glasses that I've placed on this piece of paper, and now we're gonna wheel it into the sunlight. Oh, let me move the water. No.
Neat. I'm going to put a little bit of water in those. Well, I'm going to put a little bit of water in the one that can accept water. Do you accept water into your life, Coca-Cola? I do. Blessed art thou, clear Coke. Well, we've just created a lens. Because a lens takes light and bends it. It can bend it in, it can bend it out, it can squish it and then re-unsquish it. In this case, it looks like it's taking light from all different angles and focusing it to a point. And we are very lucky. I poured just enough water in these glasses for it to pour out and start developing the cyanotype it's on. Now you can't see that right now, but it's happening. I'll take some of the development water and, and go like this. And now you can watch that section get developed. And then I'll do it again because it's fun. I won't do the sound effect because I realize it might not be fun to hear. Oh, here comes a June bug. Is he going to be part of our cyanotype? We'll see if he lands. He might come in. Is he going to bumble in? It's July, friend. Depending on where you are in the world, you may not know June bugs. They start out as little tiny, they look like fat pill bugs, little roly poly pill bugs in June and May. And then they turn into this giant green buzzing two inch thing that doesn't have very good eyesight so it just kind of bumbles around into stuff and bumps until it finds its place which hey we've all been there it's kind of maximizing the already existing development effort that this had. <laughs> Sorry, I keep making the sound effects. Because it's fun. I like the, uh, the added irony of using blue graphics to represent Coca-Cola products. Blue is more directly associated with one of their competing colas. This will be a unique challenge, this uh, Coke bottle cyanotype, because we got it developed on one side already a little bit, but the other side hasn't been exposed yet. So I don't know what that's going to do. It's going to do something. We'll find out in a moment when we flip them around. Let's take a look. Let's do this. We're going to put some shade in front of these. So I've got this shade I'm going to put up here. Okay. I like it. I think it's pretty neat looking already. What is it? <laughs> I don't know, but it's done. It's time to flip it. Oh, there's that June bug. You visiting? I don't want him to, you know, fly into my hair even if that's un unreasonable of a thought. Okay, let's move the full bottle. Yeah, water. Okay, let's flip this. Let's dry this. Okay, so back up. I'm gonna dry that just a little bit because we don't wanna make a big wet mess underneath. Look at that. 
that orange spot, that is a fully developed section of the cyanotype. That was coincidentally, not coincidentally, where the light was focusing from the sun. So that looks like what happens when it gets the most sunlight possible. It turns orange. Hmm. Well, we know where that one was. And we know we just put the other one upside down next to it with a different script facing out. And we've got our image. I believe. You'll notice this little section here is not getting any sun. That's okay. If you're just tuning in, you are watching a cyanotype get made in real time. Cyanotypes are sun photographs. They take light from the sun and they convert it into a darker pigment on paper. And then you develop it in water. Let's see how these kids are doing. Yeah, I like it. It looks nice. I don't think the water on the other side develop, uh, hindered our development on this side at all. Of course, I don't know yet. We're going to find out really soon. These are good. So let's do this. All right. Now we have our cyanotype. Let's in our developing box. Today we are developing with a little less efficiency than we normally do because I want to give each of these cyanotypes that we make the full development process for you to enjoy. So admittedly we are using more water than I would like to, but we are reaching more people with this and this experience may change someone's life. So the water of life is being expended well, in my opinion. Cyanotypes changed my life. They're a way cheaper way to experiment with, with photography. I used to shoot Polaroid film that cost $10 in exposure. Each one of these, you know, sheets of cyanotype paper cost me maybe two cents. It's important to remember that there are costs beyond the money that I paid. There are costs in the material. And there are absolutely costs in where this was made and who made it. These are all the things we get to consider when we make purchases. Let's see what the other side of this looks like. Oh, I love it.
I think the total amount of time we spent making this was maybe 15 minutes. We can look back on the stream and see, but that seems right. Look how dark it is where the sun was really just focused. And here I see kind of a hand reaching up to grab the vessel. Or maybe a plant, maybe it's algae underwater. While we have this development water going, we're going to develop our other cyanotypes down here. This is our first cyano sandwich. So it was versatile, the giraffe, pressed onto an unexposed seat of, sheet of cyanotype paper. This was our other cyanotype. Sandwich, cyano -witch. Those are a lot dimmer than I thought they'd be. That's okay. So these are all darker than I was expecting. And that's again, probably because I was impatient. This was about three hours of direct sunlight. And this was about an hour or less of indirect sunlight. I don't know why I thought those should equal, equal their exposure. <laughs> it's okay, I'm learning things with you. So thank you for being here. I think I learned more together. I'm going to move this inside for just a moment. And now let us rinse. Again, I'm careful not to leave it, the water just blasting on any one part of the cyanotype for any length of time because I've learned that can pretty much just drill away the image with water. And what would be the point of making these images just to wash them away? I do kind of like the double tone image. You know, this is, this is a lighter blue. Yeah, I know this is a Bob Rostism, but there are no mistakes. There are only happy accidents. Oh. <laughs> 
once we finish making cyanotypes, I typically put them on a screen or you can put them on, you can actually, this isn't the best way to do it, but you can stick them on anything that can absorb them. You know, this is a vertical surface, but it stays on there until you put more water on it and then it slides off. So I like to stick these sometimes on the bathroom mirror and I'll always know when they're done because after I stick them on the bathroom mirror, half an hour I'll be in another room and I'll hear this just just the sounds of cyanotypes falling off the mirror as they lose their moisture. So it's, that's a nice indicator to know when they're done. Are these done yet? I don't know. This one might be. Let's look. And how do we know when they're done? That's the next question. Well, we know when they're done when it doesn't look like there's any more yellow development chemical in the water. So let's see what this water looks like. Let's hold it over something white. Eh, it's kind of yellowy. Let's rinse this last bit out and then give it a tiny bit more water. I say tiny bit, but it's all relative. I want to be clear. I understand water is a valuable commodity. And I want everyone that plays with cyanotype to remember that too. If you're lucky enough to have all these materials at your disposal, then you're ahead of a lot of the world. Not everyone has easy access to water or paper, food, uh, sunlight. So if you're lucky enough to be making cyanotypes, the day is already yours. <laughs> yeah, these are all good. Let's. Let's put these on a, the screen here. So I just put a window screen and I'll let the, you know what, aren't, those aren't dry yet. They're not, they're not yet done. They still have something to give. This looks pretty done. We're going to seal the deal. I'm going to do this fun thing where I take a little bit of water and we add some hydrogen peroxide to it. So this is just the simplest thing. I get this at the Dollar Tree. Just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, just like nah, that, not much, not much. And then I'm gonna add this and we're gonna watch some things happen. Let's see what will happen. Sure, I add it to this side and then rinse it all in. All right, well, I'll tell you what I notice. Things look bluer. The hydrogen peroxide is meant to speed up the development process. So it theoretically just asked all of the chemistry that hadn't been developed yet to just hurry up and develop. And when I say ask, I mean forced. And we do that not at the beginning, we do that toward the end. You don't want your first development to be with hydrogen peroxide because that will just be too much. It'll just be too aggressive, in my experience, for the first development. But the second one, that's a good choice. And it means we can hang these up now. Let's pull our... I don't know, can anyone come up with a name for these? This is um, a cyanotype that has been folded over on itself. So it has a positive and a negative or a negative and positive. I'm thinking a sandwichotype, but I think that's going to confuse people. So maybe a sun, a sunwitch. And this is actually, this is, she's not a witch, but this is a Lego with like a witch hat on. So that was pretty great. I'm going to count everyone as being inspiration for that. Thank you. Sunwitch. And after this, because I see someone has enjoyed this Coke cyanotype, we're gonna make another one that we can give as a gift. And they're gonna, well, let's see. We don't know what we're gonna do yet. I try not to prophesize too far in the future, even for things <laughs> that I am ostensibly in control of.
Okay, let's put these over somewhere to dry. Here is our other cyanotype from earlier. This was the, the cyanotype of the camera. Let's see what the other side looks like. You can see it's not yet dry yet. It's, it's, it's still drying. And now we're gonna take the other cyanotype and we're gonna do that, let it drain a little bit. And we're gonna put it on our screen. I know it's already been on your screen, but now we're gonna put it on a screen made of mesh instead of pixels. When you're a filmmaker, you're taught that if it doesn't, sh if, it, if it's not in the frame, it doesn't exist. So I'm doing my best to work and show everything I can within the frame of this camera. But occasionally I'll do stuff over here, not realizing that I can't show you what I'm doing. So try to always be inclusive. There's our finished cyanotype. Let's go leave it to dry. And let's make one more. We're going to do another cyanotype with the Coke bottle because I think they are, they're super cool. I like that they have a strong graphic design element. They have a script font and they have a, a claim font. And I like that they also have a nice shape, that unique kind of, it's not like an old fashioned champagne glass quite, but it's similar. I don't know if it was modeled after anyone's particular anatomy like a certain champagne glass was rumored to be. Mm -hmm. All right, now what do we got? We got another Coke bottle. Let's make this one like this. And we're going to endeavor to make this a Coke bottle excuse me, floating in space. Let's make it floating in space like this. First, I'm gonna hit it with some cinnamon, like this. Um, this is gonna look silly. There we go. Okay, and I reiterate, this is not a plan. I do not yet know what this will be, but I do know that we're ready to expose this cyanotype because what more could we do to it? I don't know. Let's reel it on out. I'm gonna go over a bump, so I'm gonna go kind of slow. Now let's see. Okay, move it under the sun. Okay. Evidently I overestimated where the sun was gonna be angularly, so let's do this. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're typing. English is confusing. There we go. All right, at some point we're gonna put water in that. 
And you know what? We're not even going to put water in it. We're going to put water with some coffee grounds in it. And we're going to do that because we want kind of a specific color of water. Not quite coffee, not quite tea, but darker than clear water. So what I'm actually doing right now is rebrewing some coffee, not to drink, but I'm going to use it as the, the dark liquid for this cup. So that's a good way to reuse coffee that may not have had a second life otherwise. If you got some grounds hanging around and you're making a cyanotype, use it to make a darker liquid. <laughs> coloring, food coloring is fine too. Anything is a good choice if it can add overall density to the water compared to being clear. Okay, so now we have this, this liquid. Looks kind of like apple juice. And now we have some water here, so let's do this for no reason. Now this cyanotype is going to do the same thing as the other one. It's going to collect the light, focus it to a point, and that point will probably be the darkest image on the picture. And in this case, dark means blue. So expect that to be the bluest part of this image. And the cinnamon will probably be white. There we go, it's looking nice. So to, to clarify why we added a dark liquid to this instead of water, water would just focus this light more dark, more intensely on the middle. It wouldn't actually distribute it around the shadow. So it would just create a big bright spot. We wanna reduce that bright spot. So we're adding some thicker liquid to this, which makes this harder to transmit light through which means on the finished cyanotype, it'll probably be white instead of dark medium blue. All right, and now we got these some blocks that we're going to put down. And I'm not sure if any of the audio besides my voice is getting picked up, but it's just me. Everything else is an artificial source. looking for blocks right now. These are blocks we're going to use to build our final cyanotype. I say final, but you know, the last three cyanotypes are going to be the last ones for this, so 
who really knows when the end comes? Hmm. It says it's not receiving enough video to maintain streaming, and that doesn't seem likely. You know, it looks like I'm a little far away from my Wi-Fi for the uh, comfort of my computer. So I apologize if the stream is not looking as good as it should. All right, so let's bring it back in. Take the cinnamon off. All right, so that's what our cyanotype looks like on that side. Let's dump this, let's save that water. Okay, let's put a new glass down. And we're gonna go on this glass like this, flip it. Let's make another cyanotype in this beautiful light. Here we go. I don't know what the salt's going to do, but it's white, so it probably transmits most of its light. So I bet the salt is going to look pretty dark on the finished cyanotype, but the cinnamon is going to look pretty white. Let's add some more to this. There we go. That one's really there just to weigh it down. And it's going to be fun on this cyanotype because this corner will not be exposed at all. And I think that'll look really cool. This reminds me of one of those tangrams where you take seven different shapes and arrange them to make different images. This looks like a guy running.
Yeah, I'm gonna hurdle. Mm -hmm. All right, this is done. Let's take it away. Zoop. going to develop this cyanotype right here in the sunlight because we're rock stars like that. Wow, that is pretty cool looking. It's kind of like the Mother Mary figure coming out of, you know, where wherever she comes out of to appear in visions. Wow. I love using cinnamon on cyanotypes. That is a secret weapon. If I can offer one to anybody, put some cinnamon on your cyanotypes. Okay, let's look at the front again. I say front because I'm biased. I can read a word, so clearly it must be the front. We can read this because the way it transmitted was reversed. The light was striking it in a certain way so that the reversed image was able to imprint itself on the cyanotype. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. There we go. And let's also look at this one now that he's kind of done. I mean, he's not done, but let's be done with him. All right, let's dump a little bit of this water out and introduce some fresh. on this day, let's commit to the premise. 
All right, new cyano sheet. We're gonna put a grid on it. To you, the viewer, can you understand the pattern I am trying to create? I am trying to create a specific order to this. And I'll tell you what it is. I always want these three cubes made of the rhombuses. Rom rhombi? Rom Hi, rhombi! I always want these rhombi cubes to have a cube, a rhombus, that's pointing in the top right relative to our image right now. And I want that because that'll give consistency to our light source when I eventually add that. Does any of this make sense? It's okay if it doesn't because really, I'm talking about things I've experienced many times and I'm only about to demonstrate them. So it's okay if nothing I said was actually landing. In short, I want to make a bunch of identical configured cubes so that I have the option to symmetrify or desymmetrify them as much as I want. You know, do I want them to look all similar and the same? Or do I want them to all look all diverse and different? Or do I want to repeat things redundantly? Hard to say, but we're getting close to a pattern that's fin that's finalized. How do we know? I don't know, because I run out of blocks. And I try to keep them all in the same grid space. And then I also don't like them to be too close to the edge, but that one looks good, so it's all good. Okay. I think we need more cinnamon. I'm gonna put some cinnamon in here. And a little bit in here. There we go. And I'm using cinnamon because it is not nearly as obnoxious to spread into the air as pepper. Pepper does really beautiful things on cyanotypes because it's just tree bark or tree, tree pieces. So, cinnamon is tree bark, but it doesn't seem to hurt people's nose as much.
This is a wombat. He's going to be a cyanotype today. I'm rotating this cyanotype at 60 degree intervals because each of these angles is 60 degrees opposite each other or away from each other. And so it just kind of naturally tells me how to move the paper. You know, if it's been a few minutes, rotate the paper until this shadow lines up and becomes nothing just like this shadow. So all I'm doing is I'm seeing that this shadow looks perfect. There's almost no shadow. Align this one so that it also has almost no shadow. And there we go. Once I've given these a full rotation, and I don't know when that will be because I forget what orientation they started, I'll start removing some of the uh, cubes, some of the hexa hexagons, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, some of the hexagons and some of the rhombus shapes. And that will give us the appearance of different cubes on the finished cyanotype. And welcome to all who have joined the cyanotype stream. Today we are making sun prints using special coated paper and sunlight. And by doing this in, a, in the fun way we're doing it, we get finished images that look, that look like this. Basically, shadows that have been preserved and kept for the ages. Cyanotype is a medium that is mostly blue and white, but they can be tinted. So this could become dark brown and white, like a sepia, old-timey color. And cyanotypes are photographic paper that you can make yourself. And I have a live stream that I did yesterday that shows you how to do that. And now it's time to remove some of the shapes. I'm going to remove this one. You know what? I need a piece of tape. Gorilla tape. Oh, nope, not gorilla tape. Electrical tape. Okay, this is a new method I'm going to try. <laughs> There's cinnamon on it, so that makes it a little harder to pick up. Really worked against myself on that one. Okay, reorient that. And I'm, I'm trying to be careful lifting up these, these shapes because I don't want to jostle the things around them. You know, the idea is that I want to move these without moving other things. And I'm going to take this rhombus and I'm going to put it there. And I'm going to take this rhombus and I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to rotate it all that way. And I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to put it here. And I, I want to be clear, this is not to a plan. We do not know what the results of our, our tinkering will be. I've done enough of these to know that they'll be neat looking. So it doesn't really matter what they look like while we're making it, as long as something in the process is fun. 
If we have proof of that at the end, I'm happy. And I am so happy to be spending a day with everyone that has signed up for this. Signed up by saying yes. That is my favorite word. It is a great way to have a new day. And we got this little guy here. Let's move him. Oh, I just put him there. Well, that's okay. Let's move this, this guy. Put this there. And let's take him out. And put this guy here. I shouldn't say guy. I don't know what gender a shape is. There's really no obvious indicators for me. And that can go here. And let's rotate the paper again. Let's do it like that. And I'll put this and that and take this away and move that there. And put that there. Okay, let's rotate it yet again. I don't know which way we rotated it last time, but this is a good way to keep moving our wombat cyanotype. And this is probably going to look kind of like undulating rings. It's just kind of, you know, like a, I don't know what it'll look like. We'll find out. And then we'll turn this. There we go. And there it is. Is it done? I don't know yet. We can do so much, it's hard to know when it's done. And I'm rotating this continually because all of these blocks are casting additional shadows besides just the flat shape that we can see. They've been raised up off the paper, so they cast additional thickness. And I'm trying to neutralize that by rotating the paper and continually just kind of exposing over the shadows that they are casting. All I want is the actual shape. I don't need the depth, just want the shape. And I'm careful to keep them uh, arranged on their grid orientation because that really keeps the, the cubism effect intact as much as possible. And I hope that this has been an enjoyable process to watch cyanotypes get made. I, I, I've only ever seen it done with my own hands and I've only ever seen it through the eyes of me and I hope that other people can enjoy the process as much as I do. And now we have another side to expose on this, believe it or not. Wombat, your cyanotype is done. Now, this paper 
once it's done, we're going to flip it over and put more blocks on it again. And why are we doing that? Because we might want to make a copy of this. And if we make a copy of it, we're going to want it to be as thick, lots of thick, thick blue and thin white. We want it to have a lot of transmission of light blocking power. So having it a cyanotype on both sides, when we go to make a contact print, will give us additional contrast. That's the word I'm looking for. All right, let's do this. Here's our cyanotype, looks nice. I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna put more blocks on it. You know what, we're not gonna put more blocks on this. We're gonna do something different. And I don't know what that is yet. What should we do? That was easy to figure out. That was some more, more cinnamon, because we've learned that we can't have too much cinnamon on cyanotypes. tempting to want to change something to this, but I really think it's going to look best if we do nothing. Let's look at it a little more detail. Yep. That is some stuff on a piece of paper covered with cinnamon. There is no denying it. I think it'll be done in just a minute. That gives me enough time to clean up the blocks and the cinnamon fallout. This is the opposite side of an image we already did, so that's good. Okay, looks good. Should we remove any of these before any other one? 
I'll put this down first. It's in the center. Let's assume it's our focal point. So what we're getting here is just, these are not going to be white, they're going to be kind of light blue. And that will, by making these light blue, and by letting this one stay completely unexposed, this should be the lightest colored object on, the, on this side of the cyanotype. So if this is the lightest colored object, this is our new white point. This is the brightest part what this shadow will be. And the darkest point will likely be around the edges. Could also be underneath the shade that would, or underneath the cinnamon. That could be also the dark, the lightest point. Let's take it on in here. All right. I think we have. Do we have two cyanotypes to develop? It's just this one. I guess it's just this one. Okay. Let's see how it looks after a bath. I'm gonna dump the cinnamon off it. Which side do we develop first? I guess this side, I wanna see this side. Fans of the video game Cubert will appreciate this cyanotype. And I can tell that I made this cyanotype on a piece of cardboard because I can see the corrugation. See that little kind of rivet, or not rivet, but kind of like a ridge? That is the cardboard drying and absorbing little bits of cyanotype differently depending on where the corrugation was touching it. So that's kind of fun. Well, this looks cool this way, but let's see what the other side looks like. We spent time on both. Ah, <gasps> neato. Yeah. I like that cyanotypes give us an opportunity to reassess common objects. It takes shapes we know and it says, okay, but have you seen it against blue? And then you're like, no, I haven't. Wow, that is neat. All right, that looks nice. Do we have secret other cyanotypes that I've not yet developed? No, we did them all. Oh, no, 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 where's, um, where's Wombat? Little Wombie. Wombie, there we are. And Wombat, you fell. I'm gonna develop your cyanotype. And then let you see it. There we go, buddy. All right. It's kind of like an out-of-body experience, huh? Take a look at what we did today, huh?
Getting that. Almost. Yeah, now we're going. Cool. Now we can see what we have done and dry them. That's important. Okay. I believe this was one of our first cyanotypes of the day. That was our camera. These were cyanotypes from yesterday that we made with our pattern blocks. Here is our first Coca-Cola cyanotype of the day. Oh, got cinnamon on it, but that washes off. And then we did another one because there was tremendous fanfare in the chat room when I made one, and it seemed reasonable that there might be additional fanfare for a second Coke cyanotype. And then we did all these little ones. These are also from yesterday, paper that we made together. And then we did these cyanotypes, which, um, what do we call them? Sandwiches. These are sandwiches. There we go. Cyanotypes that make their own positive and negative. A little sandwich you put in the sun. We are prolific. Goodness, look at this. Can't even, don't even have space for it all. And how is this looking? I think it looks really good. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a rinse. Good little buddy. All right, and I don't know, I guess we'll put this on a separate screen. We have those 